Welcome to Defending Digital. I'm Chad Warner. Today's topic, the best anti-tracking software. Imagine you're a pilot calmly flying along. Suddenly, alarms blare that a heat-seeking missile has locked onto you. How hard do you think it would be to get rid of a missile that's tracking you? Now imagine that you're calmly browsing the web. Did you know that you're being tracked here? You won't hear any alarms to tell you about it. Fortunately, there are several ways you can prevent tracking or limit what information trackers are able to collect. Let's dive into what trackers are, how they track you, and what you can do about it. The threats. A few stats from the website whotracks.me. Quote, Google trackers are present on 82% of the web traffic. 25% of the web has a hidden Facebook tracking pixel. Facebook knows more than what you just do on Facebook. 1,881 out of 6,000 top websites have more than 10 trackers per page. End quote. Who is tracking you? Advertising companies such as Google and Facebook make up a large share of trackers. They track advertisements to learn when they're seen and clicked and details about who sees and clicks them. Many organizations use analytics, such as Google Analytics, to learn how their websites are being used and details about who uses them. Social media companies, such as Facebook and Pinterest, integrate with websites to show like and pin buttons and to track sites that you visit. You've probably noticed that if you're looking at a product on Amazon or some other shopping site, you start to see ads for that product on other websites. That's made possible by tracking. How are you being tracked? You've probably heard of cookies, and they're still being used, but other methods have arisen in recent years. A cookie is a file that contains information which identifies you to a website, so that it can keep track of who you are. Cookies are simply part of how users interact with websites. They are not inherently a privacy risk. But when cookies are used to track users around the web, they are considered a privacy risk. A first-party cookie comes from the site that you're on. A third-party cookie comes from a different website. This is the type that's used for tracking across websites. An internet protocol or IP address. This is the internet address given to your device by your network or your internet service provider, your ISP. If you're at home, your home's IP address comes from your ISP and can reveal your general location. Fingerprinting. This is used to identify users based on the characteristics of their device or browser, such as the operating system, browser extensions, language, and installed fonts. And the website Am I Unique, which you can find at amiunique.org, um, will show you information about your fingerprint. A super cookie, or ever cookie, is a file that's stored in a different place than normal cookies, which makes it harder to detect and remove. A beacon, sometimes called a tag or a pixel, is a small, usually invisible object that's embedded into a web page or email. When you view the web page or email, the beacon is loaded and your activity is recorded. How to increase your privacy. There's a setting in many browsers called Do Not Track. This was supposed to be an easy way to opt out of tracking, similar to how the National Do Not Call Registry was supposed to be an easy way to opt out of telemarketing calls. Unfortunately, both efforts have failed to deliver. There's no enforcement for Do Not Track. A website can choose to honor your setting or not, and you don't know if they are. So we need to take other steps to limit tracking. You may hear that you should delete all cookies or prevent your browser from accepting cookies in order to block trackers. This is not the solution, because companies are increasingly using methods other than cookies for tracking. Also, preventing or deleting first-party cookies, which are those cookies from the website that you're using at the moment, can break basic website functionality, like the ability to be logged into a website or to keep a product in your shopping cart. Third-party cookies, which are those cookies from web a website other than the website you're using at the moment, are less frequently used for functionality and more frequently used for tracking, <clears throat> so blocking them is a different matter. Configure your browser to limit tracking. The place to start in blocking web traffic reg tracking is your browser. Most browsers have settings that can limit tracking, and some browsers offer more settings than others. I'll explain some settings to look for in the desktop versions of these browsers, and there are often similar settings in the mobile versions of these browsers. I recommend that you use one of the browsers that offers better privacy protection, such as Safari, Firefox, or Brave. <clears throat> Safari. Safari makes it harder for you to be fingerprinted by websites. According to Apple, quote, whenever you visit a web page, Safari presents a simplified version of your system configuration. Your Mac looks more like everyone else's Mac, which dramatically reduces the ability of trackers to uniquely identify your device, end quote. In the Safari preferences, you can click the privacy tab and then check the box to prevent cross-site tracking. 
And according to Apple, quote, Safari uses machine learning to identify advertisers and others who track your online behavior and removes the cross-site tracking cookies and website data they leave behind, end quote. Now, I've also written a guide on Safari security and privacy, and you can find that at defendingdigital.com on the guides page. Firefox. In the Firefox preferences, you can click security and privacy. There you can choose the level of enhanced tracking protection, standard, strict, or custom. And if you choose custom, you can choose what to block. I recommend that you choose custom and then check all the boxes. And there you can also set cookies to third-party trackers. You can change enhanced tracking protection on a per site basis. When you're on a website, just click the shield icon in the address bar to see your options. When you are on the uh, settings and privacy page, um, lower on the page, you'll see an option to send websites a do not track signal that uh, shows that you do not want to be tracked. And you can set that to always. Now, again, it's up to websites to actually honor this request, but it certainly doesn't hurt to set that. Chrome. In Chrome, click the More icon, which are the three vertical dots at the top right, and then click Settings. And on that uh, Settings page, you'll see several different sections. And at the bottom of the Settings screen, you can click Advanced to see more settings. Once you're under Advanced in the Privacy and Security section, you want to enable Send a Do Not Track Request with your browsing traffic. Then you want to click Site Settings and then Cookies and Site Data. And you want to enable Block Third-Party Cookies. And once you do that, um, if you are on a website and um, Chrome will then show a cookie icon in the address bar, and you can click on that and choose to allow that site to set cookies in the future if you want to. And when you do that, you can also click show cookies and other site data, and then click the blocked tab to see which cookies are being blocked. There you have two options, two different buttons, allow and clear on exit. Allow allows those cookies to be used in the future. Clear on exit, stores the cookie only until you close or quit Chrome, and then the cookie is deleted. And I've also written a guide on Chrome security and privacy, which you can find at defendingdigital.com slash guides. Edge. Now, um, these instructions that I'm going to give here are for the new, as of January 2020, version of Edge, which is based on Chromium. When you're in Edge, you click the three dots and then settings. And on the left, click the menu icon, which are three horizontal lines. And then privacy and services. Then you want to toggle tracking prevention to on. And then choose the level of tracking prevention that you want. Basic, balanced, or strict. And I recommend strict. On that same screen, scroll down to the privacy section and then toggle send do not track requests to on. If you need to change the tracking prevention settings for a particular website when you're on the site, click the padlock or I symbol to the left of the web address. And then below tracking prevention, change the drop down to on or off. Brave. The Brave browser blocks trackers by default. You can change your settings in settings and then shields. I recommend enabling block cross site trackers and setting cookies to only block cross site cookies. You can change the shield settings for particular sites. Just click the shields icon, which is the same lion head logo that the Brave browser uses, and then toggle shields on or off, or you can toggle particular protections as well. At the bottom of the settings screen, you can click advanced to see more settings. In the privacy and security section, enable send a do not track request with your browsing traffic. Tor browser. If you want to go the extra mile in protecting your privacy while browsing, look at Tor browser. It routes your traffic through the Tor network, which hides your real IP address. It's designed to foil fingerprinting attempts. By default, it doesn't keep browsing history, and cookies are only valid for a single session. It's like using private browsing all the time. You can choose between three security levels, standard, safer, and safest. Because of how it works, you probably wouldn't use Tor browser as your main browser. But if there are certain situations where you need to ratchet up your privacy, it's worth considering. You should not install extensions in Tor Browser because they conflict with its privacy protections. Private browsing. You may know private browsing as incognito mode or in private browsing. Now by itself, this does not block tracking, but it is slightly helpful because of how it handles cookies. It doesn't share cookies with the regular browsing mode, and it doesn't preserve cookies once you close it. Firefox is an exception to the norm in that it does include tracking protection in its private browsing. Anti-tracking browser extensions. 
Once your browser is set to limit tracking as much as possible, it's time to add one or more anti-tracking browser extensions. The extensions available to you depend on the browser that you use. They have varying levels of configurability, ranging from few settings to a mind-boggling number. In general, you can use more than one tracking blocking bo extension, but you should check the documentation of any extensions you use for any warnings against this. For most people, one extension will be sufficient. I'm going to cover extensions for desktop browsers. Now, several of these have related mobile browsers, which can usually be set to block trackers. DuckDuckGo Privacy Essentials. This is my top recommendation because of its balance of power and simplicity. It blocks third-party trackers and shows a privacy grade for websites. If you notice that it prevents a website from working properly, you can whitelist that site, either temporarily or permanently. It's available for Chrome, Safari, and Firefox. Now, I have links to um, all of these extensions in the blog post that goes along with this episode at defendingdigital.com, as well as a few screenshots. Privacy Badger. This is basically a set it and forget it option. There's nothing to configure because it learns as it goes. According to the Electronic Frontier Foundation, EFF, which develops the extension, quote, if as you browse the web, the same source seems to be tracking your browser across different websites, then Privacy Badger springs into action, telling your browser not to load any more content from that source. If it observes a single third-party host tracking you on three separate sites, Privacy Badger will automatically disallow content from that third-party tracker. It's available for Chrome, Firefox, and Opera. Ghostery. This is another blocker with fairly simple options. It also anonymizes your data and lets you customize blocking. Because of Apple's restrictions on Safari extensions, Ghostery is not available, but Ghostery Lite is. It lets you block trackers in eight categories. I check all the boxes except advertising because I don't want to hurt sites that rely on ad revenue. You can also individually trust websites to allow all trackers from a particular site to load. It is available for Chrome, Firefox, Edge, Opera, and then the Ghostry Lite extension is available for Safari. Disconnect. This is another one that can function as set it and forget it, but you can also configure it if you'd like. By default, it blocks a wide range of trackers. You can manually allow certain trackers or all trackers on a website. Disconnect's Visualize page feature is unique. It shows a graph of third parties that Disconnect is blocking. This, is, this feature is only available on Chrome and Safari, but the Disconnect extension is available for Chrome, Firefox, Safari, and Opera. uBlock Origin. This could be a fit if you are technical and want something with more controls. It can use a large number of filter lists, which are lists of domains, and you can enable or disable those filters. For example, I disable advertising-related lists because I don't want to hurt sites that rely on ad revenue. It only takes a couple clicks to enable or disable uBlock Origin on a particular website. I like that uBlock Origin automatically blocks known malware sites. Uh, just a note that uBlock Origin is not the same as uBlock without the word origin behind it. Those are completely separate extensions. uBlock Origin is available for Chrome, Firefox, Edge, and Opera. Avast Anti-Track. This is paid software from Avast, popular uh, antivirus company, that feeds fake data to trackers so that they don't see your true digital fingerprint. It also deletes tracking cookies and other tracking data. And it says it does all this without breaking sites, which can happen when blocking trackers. It's available for Chrome, Firefox, Safari, Edge, Internet Explorer, and Opera. VPNs. A VPN, or virtual private network, provides some tracking protection because you get a different IP address, sometimes every time you connect to the VPN. For sites that track by IP address, that will throw them off the scent. Another advantage is that the IP address you get usually points to a different geographic location than you're currently in. Other than changing your IP address, a VPN really doesn't provide other protection against trackers, but it will protect your data when you're on public Wi-Fi. And I've done a post about why you would want to use a VPN. You can find that at defendingdigital.com. Among VPNs, I like Proton VPN and Private Internet Access. And uh, you can find Proton VPN at defendingdigital.com slash go slash Proton VPN and private internet access at defendingdigital.com slash go slash PIA. Anti malware. Some anti malware has anti tracking technology. If your anti malware software does, then you can learn more about it and decide whether to use it. I don't recommend choosing anti malware software based on how well it blocks web, tra web tracking. Instead, just focus on how well it prevents and removes malware. That's really its job. Note that some anti-malware claims to block tracking, but really all it does is delete cookies. 
This is not an effective way of blocking tracking, and it can make browsing a pain. Blocking ads. Most people think of blocking web tracking and blocking ads as the same, and web advertising often uses tracking, so it's understandable to lump them together. But it is possible to block some tracking without blocking all ads. Why would you want to do this? It's an ethical issue rather than a technical one. Many websites rely on advertising as a source of revenue. Sometimes it's the main, or the only way, that they earn money. If those websites don't earn, they can't pay their employees, pay for web hosting, etc. These sites and the people behind them are financially harmed by ad blocking. For this reason, I try to configure my browsers and extensions to allow ads but block other tracking. I encourage you to do the same. What you should do. 1. Choose a privacy-protecting browser. I recommend Safari, it's only available on Apple devices, and Firefox and Brave. 2. Configure your browser to limit tracking. You can see the instructions that I've covered in this episode, and you can find the blog post also at defendingdigital.com. 3. Install at least one anti-tracking browser extension. If you want the simplest set it and forget it option, I recommend Privacy Badger. If you want something with a few more options, I recommend DuckDuckGo Privacy Essentials. But you can consider the others that I've covered in this episode. Step 4. For the next few days, pay attention to your browser and any extensions that you install. This will help you learn how they're blocking trackers, and this will also help you fine-tune your settings. Hope that helps you protect your privacy online. If you know anyone else who is looking for privacy-protecting tips, please send them over to defendingdigital.com. Um, if you found this episode helpful, I'd love it if you would leave a rating or review in Apple Podcasts or Google Podcasts or wherever you are listening um, to this episode. Um, and I do appreciate the reviews that people have left. Uh, I've not been great about um, mentioning those here on the show, but uh, one that came in um, recently was from the user Jedi Mind Trick on You, who said, Great show. We need more shows like this that deal with personal privacy and security. I enjoy listening and how the shows hope the shows continues. Keep it up. Thank you.